الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين. Welcome again, my dear respected brothers and my dear sisters, my dear viewers, to another one of our wonderful programs entitled Lessons in the Month of Ramadan. And as we begin our program, I would like to greet you as usual with the Islamic greeting of peace by saying Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May the peace, the blessings, and the mercy of Allah be with each and every one of you. We are coming down close to the month, uh, to the ending of the month of Ramadan. We don't have much time again. And, uh, you know, I mean, we should be trying our best, you know, uh, to exert ourselves to do as much good as possible, especially in the, the aspect of ibadat and worship and make a lot of dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make dua for yourself, make dua for your brothers and sisters, for your family members, for, for every everybody you can think about. Make dua for them, make dua for the whole ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, yesterday we started to speak about, you know, the topic of giving in the path of Allah, you know, and there is one thing that we like to add to that, you know, and that is, uh, that is the concept of sadaqah jariya. You know, when we look at it, um, while we are alive on this, in this world, we do many things. And whatever we do, we get the blessings for it from among good deeds. You know, um, if we do bad, then we'll get sins for that, and sins will bring about punishment. We don't want to be punished, so we should try to, to cut it out, stop it, and for what we have done, beg Allah for His forgiveness for those sins that we may have committed in the past. But generally speaking, whatever good we do, we, we get the blessings for it here. And it continues like that. But then, a time comes when death approaches. And when we die, then everything that we used to do, it comes to an end. It cannot go further. Every single thing comes to an abrupt stop, as we say. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِذَا مَاتَ الْإِنسَانُ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَنْهُ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when a person passes away, all his a'mal and all his actions come to a stop. In other words, he used to perform salat, now he would not get blessings for performing salat because he is now dead. It stops right there. And in that way, whatever good deed he whatever good deeds he used to do, that comes to an end. And the book of records stops there, nothing further is registered into the book. That's the first part of the hadith. Nothing further is registered in the book. But at times when, or let's say each and every one of us, when and when, whenever we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us back and we die, we will wish that good deeds keep on coming into our records. Because when we stand before Allah, then and only then we will be able to know how much good we have done and how much bad we have done. Right now we are trying our best. While many people measure the good deeds they have done, and they do, many do not measure the amount of sins and wrongdoings that they do, which is not fair. In other words, at the end of the day, a man will look back and say, Alhamdulillah, I was able to perform my five salat today. At the end of Ramadan, a person will say, Alhamdulillah, I kept 30 fast or 29 fast, or at least I kept the majority, 25 or 20. You know, subhanallah, at the end of the Tarawih Salat, a man will say, Alhamdulillah, I was able to perform my 20 rakats, you know, this night. And, you know, at the end of the day, out of Ramadan, a person will look back and think about the good deeds he had done. And he will say, okay, Alhamdulillah, I give a little charity today. I was able to arbitrate between two people, make peace. I was able to give some food to the poor and the needy people. You know, a beggar wanted something. and again. So what we normally do, the human tendency is that we look back at these good things. And we become happy, Alhamdulillah, which is very good. But we don't pay attention and we don't keep an eye out for the amount of wrong things we may commit during the day. Okay? If we were to do that, then at the end of every day, we would know whether our good deeds are more or the sins are more. Now, sin is not only uh, committing adultery or fornicating or, or consuming intoxicants or stealing. You know, there are many other sins 
You know, and this is how shaitan deceives us. Sometimes a man, if you were to ask a man, a Muslim, uh, do you consume intoxicants? He said, no, no, no. How, what, what question are you asking me? I don't consume intoxicants. But why would he say that and react to that in that manner is because this is really heinous. This is bad. That is a sin. He may even tell the brother, well, you are insulting me. I, I, you'll ask me, a man like myself, a Muslim. But that same person who views intoxicants in that manner, he does not view, view backbiting in the same manner. And every day the person may be engrossed in backbiting and it does not even strike him that backbiting is a sin just like how intoxicant and consuming intoxicant is a sin. You know, this is a major sin and that is a major sin, you know. Why is the person differentiating? In other words, by him becoming engaged in one sin goes to show that this is okay for him. This sin is okay for him. And that sin, but, you know, he has to refrain from. And this is how shaitan, Satan deceives us. Once we have not done the apparent sins that people will generally look at being sinful, sometimes Muslims feel safe that I am okay. We are doing more good deeds. No. We have to check ourselves from the morning we get up to the evening. Did we look at anything haram? Those are sinful things. Did we say anything with our tongues haram? Did we slander? Did we backbite? Did we lie? Did we make joke and fun of anybody? Did we ill speak anybody? We have to check those things too. What about what did we listen to? Did I listen? A Muslim says, did I listen to anything haram and unlawful in the sight of Allah? Remember, sins are, are come about when we disobey Allah. And anytime we disobey Allah, then it is a sin. Now it is for Allah to forgive us or Allah for Allah not to forgive us. But the fact that a Muslim, Muslim and a person has committed a sin, then that is there. You know, that is about the ears now. What have we listened to? If we listen to backbiting, we are equal in sin with that one who committed that act of backbiting. You know, did we listen to any lies? Did we list, listen to fabrications? And did we listen to, uh, you know, gossips and, 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 and things like that? Did somebody speak another person and we listen to that? Did we listen to music, musical instruments? That is totally haram also. Lies, did we listen to lies? Were we part of those things? <coughs> that's, that's three organs. You know, these are a few organs. Our tongue, our eyes, our ears. What about the heart? <coughs> what type of thoughts we brought in the heart? What type of thoughts we entertain in our hearts? Do we have a clean heart? Do we have a pure heart? What, what, we, what do we have in our heart? Do we have malice, rancor, hatred? Envy, jealousy, do we have these things in our hearts? Those are ills, ills of the ills of the heart. Those are dirtiness of the heart. Those are sins that are committed internally, committed by the heart. This is why Allah orders us in the Holy Quran by saying, Wadaru Dahir al Ithmi wa Allah orders us in the Holy Quran by telling us, leave off from the internal sins and the external one. So a Muslim should not only be worried about the external sins that he's committing that people are looking at and people are seeing and he's saying, well, this is haram and that is haram. He must also be conscious of the sins that are committed internally. The grudge that you have, the ill feelings that we have in our hearts, you know, the envy and the jealousy and the malice and the hatred that we have and whatever we breed in our heart for other people, those are sins in our heart that we have to get rid of also, not only the external thing. This is why Allah tells us in the Quran, leave off the internal sins and the external sins. Now, the internal sins are more dangerous than the external sins. So we have to understand that because from the internal sins, the external ones are produced. So if you hate a person inside, then that hatred inside the heart will make you lie about the person, will make you backbite, will make you slander, will make you turn to violence, will make you to spread bad thoughts about the person. <clears throat> very, very important for us to look at these things. So therefore, you know, the point about sins, you know, we don't measure our sins. What Satan has deceived us so that we only measure our good deeds. 
you know, so we look at for the week. Yes, I have done a man says, well, if I look at, I have done a few good things, but he's not paying attention, you know, and, and, and looking, we have two eyes. Let's keep one eye on the good deeds we are doing and keep the other one on the amount of sins and wrong things we are doing. So at the end of the day, if at the end of every day, we are looking back and we are reflecting and we are seeing that and we take a reckoning of ourselves as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, al man dana nafsahu wa amila lima ba'ad al maut aw kama qala alayhi salatu wa salam, the intelligent man is the man who takes a reckoning and takes a stock of his own self. That means at the end of every day, let's look how much good we have done, but doesn't, we should not leave it there. We should ask ourselves also, well, how much bad we have done? How much sins have we committed? How, in how many acts have we disobeyed Allah? Are we transgressors or are we doers of good? And if we find at the end of the day that our sins outweigh the good, then we should make a promise to Allah, Oh Allah, tomorrow I will try my best to make the good deeds more than the sins. And if we always keep an eye on these two things, inshallah, at the end of our lives, we can estimate for ourselves that probably our good deeds are more. But the thing, the point we are making is this. Only when we stand before Allah, a man will know the true nature of the book of deeds. Only when we stand before Allah, we would know whether our good deeds are more or less. From the time we die, everything stops. We are not able a man regrets at that time. A man at the time of death or when he goes in Barzakh, he's looking back and he's thinking and he's begging Allah to send him back. As the ayats we have quoted before. He wants to come back in the world to do more good deeds. But he can't do them now. He wants to give more charity. But he can't do them now. He's in Barzakh. He wants to give in the path of Allah. He wants to give to this place and to that place. But he can't do them now because he's in Barzakh. You know, he wants to do so many things, but he can't. So whatever he could have done, he could have done that while he was alive. But now he is no more. He is dead. He has gone to the other world. He can't do anything. He will be wishing. He will be desirous. He will be longing and hoping that some good deeds come to him in that world. Some good deeds come to him in that world. But remember, he has lived his life. What has been done has been done. And there is nothing more. But there is a little way out. And let's pay attention to that. The Prophet ﷺ has given us glad tidings. That there are three things we could look out for. Each and every one of us will die. And each and every one of us may be in that state. Where we are there in Barzakh and we are just hoping that blessings come in blessings come in blessings come in but most of the time it's not coming in we, we can't do anything for ourselves what do we do then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke about something in the hadith that is very beneficial for all of us for, for all of us to know and important he said when a man dies everything he used to do and all his actions it comes there is in in عنه عمل عمله إلا من ثلاث. His actions come to a break, it comes to a stop except three things. Meaning, three things now, on account of three things, blessings can continue to come to the person even though he is in barzak, even though he is in the grave. So if we have one of these things, or the three, subhanAllah, we can expect that blessings will come. And those blessings will go in onto our book of deeds. So when it's the time for resurrection and when the weighing of the deeds are to be done by the Misa and the scale, then those things that are coming after we have died, it will show up there also. What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says? He says, first of all, he says, you know, beneficial knowledge. Beneficial knowledge. Well, there are three things. You know, so it's not necessary for, for them to be in sequence as I'm mentioning, you know, but these are the three things in the hadith. First of all, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you know, one of it, one of it is beneficial knowledge. If you, while you are alive, you taught something to somebody, you give somebody a good advice or, or you give good knowledge to a person and you taught something good to a person, and that person continues to practice upon that knowledge even though you have passed away. 
you know, that person continued after you have died. Then although you have died and gone back to Allah, as long as this person continues to practice upon that knowledge, you, the one who had taught him that, will continue to get blessings from the action of that person. So if you taught a person to do good deeds and you were instrumental in stopping him from what? Bad deeds. If you encourage the person to perform salat or perform salat five times a day because of your words, because of your statements, your good counsel, or you actually encourage the person and you were instrumental in getting people to give zakat, to fast and all these things, you have given them a type of knowledge which became useful to them now. Or more than that, you taught a person to recite the Quran, you taught him the Qaeda, and then you taught him the, 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 the glorious Quran. And now when you left the world, he was reading the Quran good because you taught him. Or you taught a person how to make wuzu, or how to perform salat. You know, or you taught him anything. You taught him hadith. You taught him tafsir. You taught him fiqh. You taught him anything that is known as beneficial knowledge. A knowledge which is beneficial is that knowledge which will save a person from the fire of hell. That knowledge which gets a person closer to Allah. Any type of knowledge that cannot get a person closer to Allah, it gets him far away from Allah. Remember that. Those are from among the statements of our pious predecessors. Knowledge which does not get a person closer to Allah, gets a person further away from Allah. So beneficial knowledge and useful knowledge here, it means knowledge through which the recognition and the ma'rifat of Allah can come. Knowledge through which a person will become obedient to Allah. Knowledge through which a person will bring about good conduct himself. Knowledge through which a person will better himself as a Muslim and a person will be able to prepare himself for the hereafter and through which and, through, and based upon practicing based uh, on practicing upon that a person will get the pleasure of Allah and go to paradise, paradise. things that are given you know sciences that are given in this manner and known as beneficial knowledge so one thing that will continue so how that is the first thing you, while you were alive, you taught somebody something from among what we have mentioned, you know, or you purchased the Quran and you give it to a person, and that person keeps on reciting that Quran, subhanallah. You may have died and gone back to Allah, and this person continues to practice upon that knowledge what you have taught to that person, then he will get the blessings for it also. You will get your blessings and he will get blessings. Now that brings to our mind another very important thing. And that is, in the same manner, if an individual was instrumental in teaching a man to commit a sin, then as long as that person commits a sin, the wabal and the sins also will fall on his shoulder. This belongs to another hadith, actually. This is from another hadith where the Prophet ﷺ spoke about that. You know, in other words, you taught a person to disobey Allah. You taught a person to do wrong things, to be disobedient to his parents. You taught a person bad things, sins. And you die and go and he's committing that sins. Well, the individual who taught him, he will be punished for that also. So anyhow, back to that hadith. That's beneficial knowledge. The Prophet ﷺ said the second thing is sadaqatun jariyah. It's sadaqah that you have given which continues to flow. It continues to bring about blessings, sadaqah and charity. It means that while you were alive, you gave your monies in the cause of Allah to such places that continue to do good works for the sake of Allah in the cause of Islam. While you were alive, you donated your money towards the masjid. You donated your money towards building something for Islam. You donated your money towards an institute that continued to use it to propagate ilm and teach people. You donated it even to a cemetery that they were building a cemetery. You donated for any such thing that are, were and directly connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even it means that, you know, like in many places, you, you give your money towards opening up a well for people to get water, you know. And, and any such place, such, such thing that you have given your money, that after you have died, the people continue to benefit from that. From that, 
Yo, you use your money and you purchase carpet for the masjid and you have died and gone, but people are performing salat on that carpet. You know, you purchase your money, use your money and you purchase a fan in the masjid. You would have died and gone and the people in the masjid are using that fan to be comfortable to perform salat. You know, and in this way you have used your money while you are alive for the cause of Allah. You know, something which we spoke about yesterday, giving your money for the cause of Allah. You know, and although you would have died and gone, but what you have done while you are alive, it continues to benefit people. That is Sadaqai Jariya. As long as people continue to benefit from those things that you have done and to which your monies were used, you will continue to get the blessings for it. You will continue to get the blessings for it. You know, in many places, I remember in India, people will come and purchase plates for students to eat in. They would have died and gone, but as long as people are partaking from that, they will get the blessings. Or cups, tea cups as the case may be. People have contributed also to our place. They have purchased those cooler, you know, that the students can drink from, cool water. So therefore, it means in many places in the world you have that. In Islamic Institute, people come just to do something because these places are for the sake of Allah. Allah causes these places to remain for very, very long period. Hundreds of years passes and these things remain. They do not come to an end. And no matter what state of poverty people reach in, it do not come to an end. You know why? Because they are propagating the religion of Allah. They are propagating the deen of Allah. They are propagating something that is most beloved to Allah. They are teaching the words of Allah. They are teaching the, word, teaching the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah loves these places this is why you will find that a business will start it will go in bankruptcy another business will start it will go in bankruptcy something will be built and it is short lived another thing will be built and all all the different activities come to an end but in places that are called Darul Ulooms or Madrasas or Islamic Institute hundreds of years will pass and they remain like that they remain like that and they continue to go higher and higher they do not stop the activities it does not go in bankruptcy and it does not come to an end why because these are places like masjid 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 move from one state to another state no matter what poverty the country or the people will fall in the masjid always continues to progress always masjid is always better in itself why because these are places that are very very beloved to allah and close to allah and allah himself has taken the responsibility to provide and to protect these places how good it will be that we are instruments that allah uses to reach out to these places and help these places very important so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said sadaqa jariya and sadaqa jariya means anything that we have done while we were alive helping the cause of allah helping the deen of allah doing good works contributing supporting the different things the deen of allah that 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 continues to occur you know on account of our support and contribution even after we have died as long as people benefit from that and as, you know it goes on we will get blessings if we had contributed even though we are in the grave and in barzakh those are two things the third thing the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if we have left righteous children behind for us righteous children behind who will continue to pray for their parents who will continue to pray for their parents this is the third thing it means that you have groomed your children your son or daughter or your children in such a manner you have taught them good adabs and etiquettes you have taught them your, their deen islam you have groomed them and grown them up in islam that they have learned the values of islam and their connection with you was such that when you die, they continue to make dua to Allah for you. They continue to do good works on your behalf. They continue to give charity on your name. Then, because you have left righteous children who continue to pray for you, who continue to make dua for you, then those things will reach you also. So therefore, when we look at this hadith, subhanallah, we will get a very important lesson that when we die what we used to do comes to an end 
we will surely without doubt need a lot of blessings when we stand before Allah. Once we go to the Barzakh, we will realize that we need a lot more blessings that we would have achieved on the face of the earth. We will need a lot, but how can we get it? We are already dead, we can't perform Salat, we can't give charity, we are there in the state of Barzakh, just hoping and waiting that some good thing is done. Well, the Prophet wasallam said to us, glad tidings, these three things, get involved in any one of these three things and you will prosper, you will get the blessings. That is inevitable as we mentioned in some programs ago. We have to die. We have, each and every one of us must go in Barzakh and each and every one of us must come to the state where we will realize that we need more blessings to our record. If we take any one of these three or these three things, then inshallah, we can hope to get blessings transferred and conveyed to us on account of any one of these three, three things or the three if we are able to do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, you know, keep us well, give us that which is good and enable us to obey Him and be obedient to him and enable us to be true and sincere Muslims. May Allah increase our Iman, increase our Taqwa, increase our faith in him and enable us to continue to live good lives of true Muslims as long as we live. So until we meet again, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you again for your attentive listening and viewing. Wal-akhir da'wan, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.